Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Rafiq Kurnia Putra. And my name is Intan Wadiatul Akidah Kafa. Today we are going to present our research with the title Unveiling the Potential of Generative Artificial Intelligence, or AI, in Hadith Studies. A deep dive into chat GPT and BART case studies. As our educational background, I have a master's degree in security and cloud computing from Aalto University in Finland. And I have master degree in statistic from University of Science Malaysia. Okay, so in this uh, presentation, we will go through a few agenda. The first one is background. The second one is research question and also scope. The third one, evaluation methodology. Fourth, result and discussion. And the last is conclusion and suggestion. We will first elaborate the background that motivated this research. The emergence of AI tools marks the technological advancement that is happening. So AI tools makes our life easier because it's able to provide personalized recommendations on anything. For example, a news that uh, we can read that match our interests only. And then the technology also impacting the learning process. In the past, learning process was often more just a passive experience, but nowadays students uh, more into active learning and more into something that individually personalized for them. And finally, the technology has made it possible for the students to access information from anywhere in the world. And this has led to a more personalized experience as students can choose the materials and methods that work best for them. And what is AI? Back then in the 1955, John McCarthy defined AI as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines, especially intelligent computer programs. Then how about generative AI? What is it? Longoni et al. defined generative AI as a type of artificial intelligence that can produce textual, visual, and auditory content with little to no human intervention. Examples of generative AI tools include ChatGPT, which was first introduced in November 2022 by OpenAI, and BARD, which was just recently announced in February 2023 by Google. Both are large language models trained on massive datasets. They can be used to generate text and answer your questions in an informative way. And the risk questions and scope of this project uh, there are two questions that we aim to answer. The first one is that, can generative AI tools such as ChatGPT and BART be used to learn Hadith? The second one, which generative AI tool, ChatGPT or BART, provides more accurate information about Hadith? And the scope of this research is limited to be focused on evaluating the performance of ChatGPT and BART as a learning media for learning Hadith. So it doesn't assess their capability when used to study another subject. Okay, for the evaluation and methodology part. To evaluate the proficiency of generative AI tools, ChatGPT, and also BART in responding to questions related to Hadith, we have formulated four questions representing two distinct perspectives. The initial point of view, you can see in the a purple color pertain to learner who possess knowledge solely about the scholars who compile the hadith and also uh, the contextual information surrounding that hadith. So this point of view will be represented by question number one and number two. For the second perspective is a view from learners who are acquainted with the actual text of the hadith and seek to determine the category or classification of those hadiths. This perspective is represented by question number three and four in the gray box color. We have curated a set of 40 randomly selected hadiths from sunnah.com, ensuring an equitable distribution across four distinct categories. We prepare 10 hadiths from Sohi, 10 hadiths from Hassan, 10 hadiths from Doif, and 10 hadiths from Maudu. Each of these hadiths will be transformed into four types of questions as previously outlined in our discussion. 
So we will demonstrate to you here how we generate the data by using ChatGPT and Bart. The first one is ChatGPT. We can go to chat.openai.com over here. And then after that, they, uh, we will start to ask question number one. So for the no number one, we ask about the hadith from Al-Bukhari that have the topic regarding the reward best attention. And the ChatGPT will answer the, the question. We will go to the next question which asks the chat GPT to provide the full Arabic version of that hadith. The next step to remove the bias from the first and second question, we try to open the new tab and delete the historical data. And then we ask the third and also fourth question. The third question, we will provide them the full text of the hadith and ask the chat GPT whether they know or not about that hadith. So the chat GPT will give us a very detailed information about that hadith. And then the last question, we will confirm them uh, whether they know or not the classification of the hadith. And then they will also provide us the answer. And then the same thing we did uh, for Bart. So we asked the same questions for the first one is uh, just the context of the hadith. And then after it returned the results, we asked the second question about the Arabic uh, version of the Hadith. And then also the same thing for the third and fourth questions, we open new tab. So to make sure that there is no bias from the previous questions. And we asked by uh, inputting the, all the narrative of the Hadith. And then finally, the fourth questions, we asked whether the Hadith is Sahih or not. And then we also take care, uh, we also uh, use the result to do the evaluation. With our data set comprising 40 hadiths, each associated with four type of question, we have generated a total of 160 data points. This data point were processed through both GPT and BART, resulting in 320 text based answer, as you can see in the graph. Subsequently, this answer were subjected to analysis and categorized into score ranging from 0 to 4 on the predefined metrics that we have previously established. Okay, to assess and contrast the performance of, of ChatGPT and also BART, we will employ two statistical methods. The first one is the man with me Utah, and the second one is descriptive statistic. The man with the U-test is a non-statistic and non-parametric statistical hypothesis test that is particularly useful for analyzing the difference between two independent samples of ordinal data. So it allows us to determine if there are statistically significant distinction in performance between chat GPT and also BART in handling the generated answer. On the other hand, descriptive statistics provide a straightforward quantitative approach to summarize and characterize the key feature and behavior of our data. So these two statistic approach will aid in providing an overall view of how both ChatGPT and BART perform in our study. So we go directly to the result we have here in the man with the U test, our alternative hypothesis aim to determine whether ChatGPT exhibit lower performance compared to BART. Using a significance level or alpha 5%, the p-value result is 0 0.00338. This p-value indicate that we can reject the null hypothesis. Providing the statistical evidence that ChatGPT indeed perform less effectively compared to BART, so let's take a look in a clear visualization in the tech, in the next slide. As you can see here, this is a bar graph representing the result from question one. In question type one, bar performed better than ChatGPT. As you can see in the yellow box, uh, yellow box, ChatGPT has less information about how this topic in the category of doif and also maudu. However, BART perform better in answering all categories because they provide the correct answer for Sohi 80%, Hassan 60%, Doif 80%, and Modu 60%. For question type 2, BART perform better than ChatGPT. ChatGPT could only perform well in providing the correct Arabic version of Sohi Hadith. However, BART perform well in answering the Arabic version of Hadith discussed in question number 1, 
in almost all the category. The third question, ChatGPT finally performed better in answering question type three. So Bart show an indication of having very little information in the Hadith category of type, as, as you can see in the graph uh, for Bart result. However, both AI tools show a better performance in, if the learner provide a full sentence of the Hadith in the very beginning of the discussion, so they will know what they are talking about. In the last question, in defining Hadith category is still a challenging task for both tools. Both tools have very little information about the category of Hadith, Hasan, Do'if, and also Maudu. Board shows, on, shows only outstanding performance in defining Sahih Hadith compared to other Hadith categories. But compared to ChatGPT, in handling the Sahih Hadith, ChatGPT also has very less information about it. To conclude this research, we have a few points here. The first one, the ChatGPT and BARD actually can be utilized as an easy to use platform for people who want to start learning about Hadith. BARD outstand, outstand in the performing compared to ChatGPT in most of question type. And ChatGPT and, Chat and BARD perform better when the le learner provide the full text of the Hadith in the discussion. And the last one, defining the Hadith category is still a challenge task for the bo both uh, tools, especially for Hassan Hadith, Do'if, and Maudu Hadith. And from the research that we did, we have few suggestions for a group of people. Uh, for the first group, for a learner who want to learn Hadith, the data indicates that the generative AI tools currently have limitations in providing accurate information about Hadith. So uh, to ensure reliability, it is really advisable to cross-verify the answer through discussions with trusted sources or even with direct consultation with Hadith scholars. And then this, for the Hadith scholars, uh, with the technology's impressive influence in other various aspects of our lives, including for religious learning, so it is really crucial to also engage in numerous like religious uh, for numerous religious and hadith scholars in the verification and provision of those accurate data for technology platforms. And finally, for everyone, we should embrace a broader perspective on learning, recognizing that it extends beyond just on the traditional classroom setup. Today, the learning can occur through mobile apps online education, and also innovative methods that align with societal needs and technological advancement. Uh, that's all that we can present today. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.